There are countless stories of duos who met on the set and became off-screen friends, but in other cases, the lines between reality and fiction, and between two people, became starkly different. Here are the TV friends who couldn't stand each other in real life. The landmark sitcom from the 1950s, I Love Lucy, starred Lucille Ball and Vivian Vance as best friends and co-conspirators Lucy and Ethel, respectively. However, the two actors had a fair amount of animosity between them, even though they were supposed to play besties on the show. This tension started the moment that Vance walked onto the set. There was an unspoken rule in old-school television that no one should compete with the leading lady in terms of looks. Ethel's character was supposed to be slightly older with a more middle-aged vibe, and Ball was devastated to see that Vance was young and attractive instead. So much so that she wanted the new girl fired. Over time, however, Vance really began to embody her character, and her acting skill won Ball over professionally, just as her friendship eventually won her over in real life. Their rivalry ended up turning into an actual bond, but their relationship was quite rocky at the start. On the 1998 supernatural drama Charmed, Phoebe and Paige were played by Alyssa Milano and Rose McGowan. Unfortunately, the two had a toxic relationship, as McGowan later revealed in a Twitter feud in 2020. She accused Milano of creating a hostile environment on set, behavior that McGowan called appalling. McGowan even went so far as to say that she cried every time the show got renewed because of how difficult her experience was with her co-star. On the show, Paige and Phoebe have their fair share of differences, but at the end of the day, they save each other's lives and have each other's backs as true friends and sisters would. But on Twitter, the pair really laid into each other. What started as a dispute about politics escalated into McGowan taking on Milano for everything, from being a fraud and co-opting McGowan's cultural reset movement to her salary on Charmed. Allegedly, despite what McGowan saw as a high salary, Milano threw a fit on set, saying that she wasn't paid enough to, quote, do this sh and McGowan's opposition to Milano's behavior is just one of a few tense relationships that Milano was involved in on the show. Why does she always pick on me first? In 1995, the fifth series in the Star Trek franchise hit American TVs, becoming a success for seven seasons and a landmark show in the realm of gender-balanced casting and the representation of strong female characters. Two of those characters ended up becoming extremely close on Star Trek Voyager, Seven of Nine, played by Jerry Ryan, and Captain Catherine Janeway, portrayed by Kate Mulgrew. Seven of Nine arrived on the scene as a foil to Captain Janeway, much as Spock was to Captain Kirk in the original series. From the beginning, their relationship was meant to be a close one in which the two characters played off each other. As the series progressed, the two became confidants and friends. In real life, however, the tensions that arose from the arrival of newcomer Ryan in season four incited a tumultuous relationship between the two stars. With the addition of Ryan, the ratings went through the roof, painfully leaving Mulgrew in the dust, according to executive producer Rick Berman. Speaking with Woman's World, he recalled someone from the press literally pushing past Mulgrew to get to Ryan. It hurt, and it resulted in an antagonism that persisted through the end of the show. For one example, Seven's notorious skin-tight costume was an element that drew attention from Janeway in favor of the newcomer. Allegedly, Mulgrew even tried to prohibit Ryan from going to the bathroom during work hours, saying it took her too long to get out of the costume. Yikes. In the original Star Trek series, William Shatner, known as Captain Kirk, apparently had some significant beef with Leonard Nimoy, who played Kirk's foil and first officer Spock. The beef was allegedly because Nimoy got more fan letters, despite his intended status as a secondary character to Kirk. The Enterprise captain was supposed to be the obvious protagonist and fan favorite, but audiences developed a keen affinity for the pointy-eared science officer. Much of this claim comes from George Takei, who played Sulu and had an even bigger beef with Shatner, who also says this fan mail story is made up. But even if the conflict over fan letters wasn't part of it, Nimoy and Shatner started off on tense terms. They clashed often in the beginning of their professional career, in part because Nimoy was so singularly focused on making the most of his moment. Though Shatner went on to describe Nimoy as perhaps his only true friend, this relationship ended shortly before Nimoy passed away. The man who played Spock suddenly cut Shatner out of his life without explanation, and he died before he or Shatner could make amends. Things aren't always as golden as they may seem, and all of the characters on Golden Girls weren't as chummy in real life as they may have appeared on TV. This was particularly true of B. Arthur and Betty White, who portrayed Dorothy and Rose respectively. It was a distaste, primarily on Arthur's part, that stemmed from her views on White's work ethic. 
Apparently, she loved to chat with the audience between scenes instead of staying focused as well as her attitude. The actress who played the cynical Dorothy was a bit cynical of White's persona in real life. According to those who've worked with her, White is a pleasant, sunshiny soul, and that made her pretty popular. Arthur, however, was convinced that her upbeat attitude was all an act. White recalled in an HLN interview, "...sometimes if I was happy, she'd be furious." I don't know what I don't know what I ever did. I don't know, but she was not that thrilled with me. While Arthur apparently wouldn't give Betty the time of day, White, true to her established image, has mostly kind words to say about her former co-star. She shared, "You didn't mess with B. B was very strong, but you loved her, even apparently if she didn't love you." In anger management, Charlie Sheen and Selma Blair played great friends occasionally with benefits, Charlie Goodson and Dr. Kate Wales. But off-screen, it was quite a different story. Their tense relationship ended with Blair getting fired from the show via text message. Leading up to the unceremonious ousting was quite a lot of anger. It started when Blair voiced concerns to series executives about Sheen's work ethic. The notoriously volatile star was quite unhappy to see these remarks leaked to the press, giving a decisive ultimatum to the producers. They had to choose between him and Blair. Of course, as an executive producer and star of the show, it was obvious that Sheen wasn't going to get cut. You can't fire me. Blair was supposed to have a pretty significant role on the show, too, but obviously nothing that could compete with Sheen's role or his anger. Not only did he tell her via text that her days on anger management were over, he sprinkled in a few tasteless four-letter words to boot. Grace and Karen are close friends on Will and Grace, but the actors who portray them, Deborah Messing and Megan Mullally, were apparently anything but. While the last few episodes were filming in 2019, Mullally missed two episodes reportedly due to onset tension. Mullally later opened up on her husband Nick Offerman's podcast about the fact that she was being bullied at work. Were the two incidents connected? While well, the description of the situation aligns with the alleged feud between herself and Messing, it's one involving a situation at work in which she stood up for herself and made things, quote, a thousand times worse. She also noted that it was an ongoing and current situation in January 2020, and Will and Grace was her only regular engagement at that time. Mullally also ditched a cast interview with Messing in 2020 ahead of the series finale. Her leave of absence from the show suspiciously coincided with her unfollowing both Messing and fellow Will and Grace actor, Sean Hayes, on social media. The latter, Mullally has always publicly gotten along well with. On Offerman's podcast, she hinted at the drama behind this choice and her minimal interaction with the cast. She revealed, I'm pretty much on my own. She added that the alleged bully had recruited many of her former allies to their side, leaving Mullally without the support she once had. Like the on-again, off-again friends they portrayed on Glee, Naya Rivera and Leah Michelle had a bit of a rocky relationship. Rivera played Cheerio's cheerleading captain and Glee Club member Santana Lopez, while Michelle appeared in the role of the ambitious and talented Glee Club captain Rachel Berry. On the show, Rachel and Santana began as bitter rivals, but over multiple periods of tension and reconciliation, they developed a reputation for their on- and off friendship. The two live together in New York City and demonstrate genuine care for one another. Things couldn't have been further from the truth in real life. In 2014, a fight on the set resulted in one of them getting thrown off set or storming out, according to varying reports. Either way, Rivera's character ended up being written out of the Glee finale. Later, she revealed that their relationship got so bad that they didn't speak for the whole of season six. Their personalities, she said, were, quote, "...not a good mixture." However, after Rivera's tragic death, Michelle paid tribute to her co-star by posting a photo of her to Instagram, alongside a pic of her late partner and fellow Glee co-star Corey Monteith. The names Mulder and Scully are synonymous with the idea of an iconic duo. However, by the time The X-Files finished airing, Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny reportedly couldn't stand the sight of each other. While Duchovny initially had positive things to say about his co-star, the relationship deteriorated over the course of a series of public comments by the two actors. At one point, Duchovny admitted that not only did he and Anderson not socialize regularly, but sometimes the attitude on set amounted to be pretty bad. As he put it, "...I'd rather be anywhere else but here, and I'm going to make you suffer for it." That's a pretty dismal revelation, and it wasn't the only one. After the show ended, Duchovny confirmed to Metro that the two were sick of each other by the time the series ended, saying, quote, "...familiarity breeds contempt." The two actors had an undeniable spark from the start, but sometimes a spark can turn into a difficult-to-control fire. Anderson described long periods of their intense relationship in which the two refused to speak to each other. Often, when they were speaking, Duchovny revealed the two would just argue about nothing.
Detective Kate Beckett, played by Stana Kadic, and mystery novelist Richard Castle, played by Nathan Fillion, were great friends and star-crossed lovers on ABC's Castle. However, in real life, the conflict between them grew so tense that eventually Kadic left the show. It must have been a nightmare to work so closely together while harboring such animosity, particularly for Stana Kadic. Allegedly, she would go into her dressing room and cry when filming was done because of nastiness from Fillion. For multiple seasons leading up to Kadic's departure and the show's subsequent cancellation, the actors reportedly despised each other. They also didn't speak to each other outside of filming. According to Us Weekly, the actors actually had to go to couples counseling together at the behest of the show. This was despite the fact that they were the furthest thing from a couple, unlike their characters. Apparently, though, it wasn't enough to save Caddick's spot on the series. She was subjected to a harsh exit without, according to her, any insight into the thought process behind her expulsion. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.